Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm your host, Amanda Lamb. In today's deep dive conversation with WREL reporter Keenan Willard, we're talking about a stabbing that took place in a store in the heart of downtown Raleigh last week on South Wilmington Street in the middle of the day. We learned this week that the man who was stabbed, 27-year-old Mark Garrity, has died. He was a customer of the convenience store called Taz's. Witnesses say the owner, Taz Zarka, who was working behind the counter at the time, stabbed Garrity because he thought he was shoplifting. Keenan, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me today, Amanda. I appreciate the chance to talk about this situation. So let's start by setting the scene. Taz has a convenience store in downtown Raleigh. It's been there a long time. It's in an area, though, that's changing, right? I mean, the downtown area, especially that street, we're seeing more stores, more restaurants, more bars, kind of set the scene of what that area looks like now. Yeah, and if you know anything about Raleigh and have spent a lot of time here over the years, it seems like sort of a vestige of the older, more square environment. There has been so much development. You see coffee shops and these high-rise buildings and all of this growth kind of exploding around it. But one of the old hallmarks, obviously, the store's been there for years. It's it's kind of just a, a smaller one-story building that's set up right next to the uh, bus station there by Moore Square. And so really the setting and I think uh, a lot of the foot traffic to that area, it's it's kind of a clientele that might be best described as transient a lot of the time. It's people coming from the bus stop, coming and going. A lot of the people, especially that we saw when we were actually reporting out there, uh, may have been sleeping on the street in some circumstances. Uh, I think that that is the kind of foot traffic that made up the bulk of the people going in and out of the store. It's just in this strip of buildings that seems like it's kind of getting you know, built up around it, but it's still stuck there in the middle. So it's almost like the old, old Raleigh, uh, in the middle of kind of a new gentrifying area, if you will. And you can see it. it stands out right there. I mean, you have these exploding in popularity restaurants like Beasley's Chicken right there on the block. And you have these, uh, again, gleaming developments that are springing up right next door. And then in contrast, it's sort of this like vape shop, snack shop that is there right next to, you know, the the, the real progress that new Raleigh is becoming. So take me back. This happened Thursday afternoon. I know a lot of what we've learned about this situation came from witnesses who were there at the scene. Um, What happened between Mark Garrity and the store owner, Taz Zarka, from what you've been able to learn in your reporting? It's really all coming from witnesses, people who were actually inside the store or they were right outside. Um, The best account of the information that we have from somebody who was inside Taz's says basically a confrontation kind of took place between somebody they described at the time as a store clerk uh, and this man, Mark Garrity Jr. Uh, Apparently, according to witnesses, Garrity was accused of stealing um, and denied that. He was sort of backing away from the clerk who was engaging him and pressing him saying that you know accusing him of shoplifting and there was just an escalation and this man who was in there with his act his young son watching this play out um said that the store clerk just proceeded to stab garrity multiple times and he ended up trying to get away stumbled outside of the building and just collapsed in the street and that's where somebody uh rushed over to just a citizen to do cpr and um uh, obviously crowded downtown area, there was a a lot of activity just around this very high profile stabbing incident. Absolutely. And I know you spoke with the family and we're going to talk about that after the break. We'll be back with more from WREL's Keenan Willard about his interview with Garrity's parents. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. I'm talking with WREL's Kenan Willard about his interview with the parents of a man who was stabbed at a downtown Raleigh store last week and later died. Um, Kenan, first of all, what did you learn about Garrity from his parents? Well, I spoke with his mother and father um, right after he passed at Wake Med from his injuries. And they talked about him really as someone who was 
uh, trying to find his way in the world is the way they described it. He went to, he grew up in Wake Forest, went to Heritage High School and Middle School, and um, had sort of been apprenticing under his father in the uh, HVAC trade. He was um, really just trying to get his feet under him in a lot of ways. And they talked about someone who loved animals, that he was a very kind person whose heart always showed through. Um, and his mother became very emotional talking about this profound relationship he had with his younger brother who is autistic. And that growing up, um, Mark always expressed a, a desire that he was gonna take care of his younger brother, that uh, he was gonna live with him. And that she said was like emblematic of the heart that this man possessed. So really heartbreaking, obviously, for the family. And, you know, again, I've learned from your reporting and other WREL reporters who have been following this that he did not have a weapon. What questions do the parents have about this situation? Really, why did it escalate to violence? Um, the, his father specifically was emphatic, saying that the details that they understand at this point were that even if this was an incident of shoplifting, that Mark was unarmed, he did not have a weapon on him, and if someone is shoplifting, it does not give you a license to use lethal force, right? That's not the way that the law works. You call the police and you handle it that way. It's not um, appropriate, based on the way we understand the law, to escalate that into a, a stabbing. Um, and so that is, that's obviously their biggest question. Why, why A, was lethal force used in response to shop, possible shoplifting? Uh, but then also questions about why police have not identified the, per, the other person, the store employee involved in the confrontation, um, why that person, according to their knowledge, is not in custody uh, or charges have not been outlined. They are still kind of pushing and waiting for accountability in their son's death. Understandably. And I, you know, we touched on this in the first half. There were so many witnesses. I mean, this was in the middle of the day um, on a very busy street in downtown Raleigh. Talk to me about the man who performed CPR, because I think that was very important for the family to know that somebody cared enough to try to save their son's life. You could tell from talking, especially to the mom, uh, what that meant to them, knowing that somebody was there in those moments for him, just out in the street uh, in a busy downtown intersection. Um, Scott McMahon was, uh, according to him, just, you know, he was around the corner and heard the commotion. And he was a 20 plus year veteran of an ER and obviously had the skills to be able to jump into action. He uh, kind of rounded the corner and saw just Mark in the street, clearly in distress and bleeding. And he was able to jump in and kind of identify where the stab wounds were, uh, provide CPR. And he says that he was basically able to just do a couple quick rounds before uh, emergency responders got there and were able to take things over from there, send him to uh, Wake Med Hospital. But uh, the family was able to talk. They got, they found Scott McMahon and were able to talk to him and express their gratitude that um, even if, you know, Mark didn't pull through, uh, they were just grateful that somebody was there for him in that moment. Uh, and so they were able to talk about what that meant to them. Yeah, that's great to hear that they were able to, to talk to him because I know they had been hoping to do that. Um, I know we've reached out to the owner, Taz Zarka. What is he saying about this incident? So the reason we named Zarka in the first place, even though police have not, was that, you know, we were able to talk to store employees. We were able to talk to other sources who said this is the man who was involved in the confrontation. And as it turns out, it is the owner of Taz's, uh, Taz Zarka, according to what they told us. So we reached out to him and basically just asked for a response to the confrontation, just trying to ask why this took place and, and what escalated everything. And he said, I don't want to talk about it. Um, he basically said that uh, the situation happened and uh, it is over now. Those were his words. And then he quickly ended our phone call. Um, 
but that was a statement that obviously did not sit well with the parents of Mark Garrity. Um, they kind of characterized it as this man involved potentially in a fatal stabbing, saying it was basically business as usual is the way that they re they received it. Um, they are in this place right now where they're still waiting for answers, especially from police and the DA's office, something about charges and accountability. Yeah, and there's been no charges. Um, what do we know about where the investigation stands right now? Really, the last public release of information from police, it was on Saturday when they identified Garrity as the victim and said that he died. Uh, we took that, and after our story, had reached out to police and asked specifically about Zarka and said, because before that we were just saying, you know, is there a person of interest? Is anyone in custody? Will charges be outlined? But we were able to then ask specifically about the store's owner and said, is he in custody? Has he been questioned? Is he going to face any charges? And uh, they have not responded to any of those inquiries over the last, now it's Tuesday morning. We have not heard back from them since Saturday, all they did after our questions was send that release saying that Mark Garrity was the person who died. So uh, the family is eager, obviously, to get some sort of closure and justice uh, based on the facts they understand it. Uh, but right now, we don't have any indication of when this investigation could take a next step. Yeah, and I uh, work with the unhoused community, and I know a lot of folks in that community are very concerned because they frequent that store and they would like to know, you know, what the outcome is going to be. And they're concerned, understandably. Kanan, thank you so much for sharing the details of this unfolding story. And I want to point out that we are recording this Tuesday morning. So if there are any um, updates, we will include that uh, links to that in this, in the notes of the podcast. And thank you for listening to the WREL Daily Download and making us part of your morning routine. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on Apple Podcasts or on whatever podcast app you use. Another great way to get WREL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email waiting in your inbox every morning with triangle news events and headlines to get you ready for the day. Sign up at WREL.com backslash newsletter.